power of the dark side. I'm not a baby, I'm a man. I am an anchor man. Is this a kissing book? The way I see it, if you're going to build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style? Hello, welcome along to Just Like in the Movies, brought to you by gkmedia.ie, coming to you live from iCinema Galway. Delighted, as always, to be joined by Lisa Tracy. Good afternoon. And Dave Coyne. Good evening and good night. The movies we're looking at on this episode are Hustlers, Ad Astra, and Rambo, Last Blood. First up, though, let's take a look at J-Lo's Hustlers. What if somebody calls the cops and says what? I spent $5,000 at a strip club, send help? <laughs> no, they won't even know what happened until they check their bank account. I think I'm going to throw up. Look, we're not the only ones doing this. How do you think the club stayed in business post-2008? It's a side hustle. Everybody's had to get creative, baby. I know a girl in Queens who did it. Does she get caught? No. She sent her two kids to college, and now she lives in Miami, opened up a nail salon. Exactly. There you go. That's a clip taken from the movie Hustlers, which is out in cinemas at the moment. And Lisa, you got to check out this movie based on a true story during the week. Why, yes, it is, Gary. And? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I really enjoyed it. Okay. I thought it was a very good movie. Great potential to be a great movie. Okay. Really, really great movie, but it kind of fell flat towards the end. Because there's no twist at the there's end. There's no twist, there's no climax in the movie, which is the uh, word we could use for this movie. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, which is based which on, is based on strippers, strippers yeah. who uh, basically drug Exo their... Exotic dancers. Exo okay. No, they're just strippers. <laughs> um, Pole dancers, is that a better word? No, 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 you can call them strippers. Okay. It's not illegal <laughs> to skip them their term. Adult entertainers is fine. Oh, moving okay. on. It's not that kind of movie. But uh, it's, um, it's, it's very good, the pacing, the acting, the, the, the moves. J-Lo is just beyond phenomenal. Because they're like saying she should get an Oscar nomination. She should get an Oscar nomination just for her dance moves. Okay. Because she's just amazing. Incredible. Fair play to her. Um, someday. Anyway. So give us the gist, uh, the gist uh, of the is movie. Basically, Constance Wu is uh, an up-and-coming stripper and she wants some guidance and she sees J-Lo as a kind of a, a, a figure that could lead her somewhere because J-Lo seems to be the top, top dog within the within the club and they kind of come together and they hatch a plan to kind of get, uh, can not really get back at people, but like make some money off of already vulnerable idiots who go to the club anyway. And uh, well, no, they're not really vulnerable. They're just idiots that they can easily drug and take their credit cards and swipe and get all their money out of their accounts. So um, JLo is, uh, she's get, she gets a little, how should we say, I don't know, she gets, she gets a little carried away with the power and she gets a little complacent about who she brings into the gang and Constance Wu is not happy with how they're drugging the people and she gets a bit of a conscience about okay. the whole thing and um, then she brings in a few girls that are not very savoury and they kind of, they, they're, they're basically the downfall of the, the plan and also those other people are copying their plan and, and everything. So because it, up at till was it 2008 before 2008. the crash so before they the were crash, making huge they were making money. huge money legally yeah well you know legally stripping normal normal yeah. stripping honestly uh, honestly like up front they and were, they, they weren't yeah. drugging anybody but after the crash they had to come up with new ways to make money and that's how they came up with the plan they were drugging they them. were drugging them and they were like still rich guys and they were still coming into the club and they were but they were becoming more aggressive and there's a lot of that in it you know there's a few elements of um well you know they had to come up with these plans because they weren't making as much money because the wall street guys weren't coming in they didn't have the money yeah and these other guys like tech guys and like architects and doctors, or, you know, like whoever had money, anybody, in whoever had money in after <laughs> the crash. <laughs> the only people, money the only people <laughs> left yeah. after the crash yeah. who had money. Um, so they were like fleecing them, but they didn't really have a conscience about it until Constance kind of gets a, a, con a conscience toward not Constance, her character Dorothy yeah. or um, Destiny is her other name. Um, she gets conscious about it and then the cops come in and you think there's going to be this big crescendo in a court case or some sort of cathartic something, but it just kind of falls flat towards the end. And it was a really good movie yeah. up until then. Unless, well, maybe they just stuck to really what happened. They stuck to what happened, maybe, yeah. I didn't actually, like, read up on the reality because I like, I like movies. And Cardi B stars in this. She Cardi was a B was stripper brilliant. in her She was day. brilliant. She's just amazing. Yeah. And, like, she, I kind of felt sad that she wasn't in it more. She was okay. she was that good. She kind of she has a great edge to her, and she's 
And were you like girl power during this? You don't get girl power during this you, at all. No, no, no. Well, you you weren't listening you, to Spice Girls on the way home. No, right? you don't no. really do, do you, that. Do you feel like they missed an opportunity here? I feel like it could have been Widows with a little bit of stripping in it. Yeah. I mean, we because reviewed they, Widows. We reviewed it as last season. Yeah. It was brilliant. And yeah. it was class. But this one was more of a... You know, they stuck to the reality and it wasn't it wasn't a fake story. So that's it just kind of fell away. Okay. But there I think there could have been a better oomph to the end. Mm. Okay. You know? Box Office Wise is doing quite good, cost twenty million to make mm. and it's taken in forty million wow. uh, so far, which is pretty good. That's good. But Downton Abbey is doing better than all of the movies at the moment. In the States. It's better than Rambo, Busters, no, Ad Astra. No, it doesn't yeah. surprise me. I it doesn't mean, surprise yeah. me. Uh, oh, yeah, it's, it's better than... I the went to see Rambo last night and I brought my mother and my aunt to see Downton Abbey and they, they thought it was fabulous. So right. it's, a, it's, you know, it, it's got its demographic and it's, it's doing its thing. And it's, you know... Okay, well, we'll talk about Rambo shortly. Lisa, I suppose, out of five... What out of you five, give I'd give it a solid three and a half. Three and a half. Yeah. All right. Three okay. and a half. Very good. Yeah. So there you go, Hustlers in cinemas at the moment. Uh, J-Lo getting rave reviews about it. Slight mixed reviews uh, about the movie, but overall I think it is uh, getting a uh, positive thumbs up. A three and a half out of five from Lisa. Next up, we're back with Rambo. John Rambo is back in the forest <laughs> uh, 37 years later since it kicked off in 1982 with the latest and probably the final installment of Rambo Last Blood. Let's take a look. All these years I've kept my secrets. But the time has come to face my past. And if it comes looking for me, they will welcome death. I want revenge. Right till I can't no more. There you go, that's a clip taken from Rambo Last Blood and there's a whole synopsis that I was going to give about the movie. It's written down here. I said I wouldn't look at the notes but I can't remember it <laughs> off the top of my head. But it's his final mission anyways. Dave, you got to see Rambo. He's back in action. Were you excited? I was excited. Um, I mean, my definition of a classic movie is a movie that if you're old enough you saw it in the cinema. You own the DVD or Blu-ray which you probably never watched. And once it comes on TV, if you're flicking around, if you're old enough to flick around, and it, you your finger just stops and you sit there and watch it. I mean, I've seen Rambo First Blood, I'm going to estimate 150 times. Oh okay. my God. It's an absolute favorite of mine. And so I love John Rambo, the character, and I was excited, but I was, you know, suitably skeptical. I was like, what's this 70 year old man going to be doing with a bow and arrow? Um, but it was, it was fun. Um, extremely formulaic, but I guess, you know, it's an action movie and old school and it's Stallone coming back doing his thing. Basically, the story is it's kind of Rambo meets Taken. He's, Rambo has found a little bit of peace. He's still a psychopath. He's still taunted by the ghosts of the past. And he's um, in Nevada with his, uh, nie his niece and her, Rambo's sister has died, cancer, and the girl's father is a deadbeat down in Mexico. And this... Uh, um, beautiful girl, his niece, they have a great relationship. Rambo has a bit of peace and they train horses and she's about to go off to college and everything is great. And then she ends up going down to Mexico against his will, looking for her father to get answers about life. And he's a deadbeat and he's very mean and cruel to her and, she's, and he doesn't actually do anything to her. But then she gets kidnapped by sex traffickers and she gets, in, she gets you know, drugged. It's very like Taken, very formal yeah. like Taken. And like, you know, <coughs> if you think John Mills has a set of skills... You ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> I was literally like, you're going to die and you're going to die. You're going to die so badly. And they do. And Rambo just like it's very it's a Western. It's basically in a Western format. So if you can think of Spaghetti Western where um, the man with no name gets beaten to a pulp by the bad guys and then he gets nursed back to health. It's literally that formula. Paz Vega, who's wonderful in this. She kind of has a similar affiliation with her sister, went in, disappeared as well. So she helps Rambo recover from the beating that he takes at the hands of these guys. And then John Rambo rescues his daughter. He's like a daughter to him, his, his niece. And she dies from an overdose. <gasps> right? So it's not the happy ending. And then Rambo rambos. Oh, no. And he literally rambos these guys. It's gruesome. Oh, there's violence <laughs> in this that would make Tarantino wince. <laughs> like, it's, it's very Tarantino-esque violence. Um, 
if you like, you know, revenge, violence movies, this is your movie. It's, it's, it's fun in a gruesome kind of strange way. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of Rambo-esque it, there's, it's, it's, it's just, and then my favorite part of the movie, ironically, was that the end credits showed stylized slow motion clips from all the Rambo movies for the last 37 years, which I really enjoyed because I've enjoyed them all. Rambo First Blood and Rambo First Blood Part 2, which is my favorite movie title because it's got first and part two in it, <laughs> is, it, they loved it. it's lovely. Uh, but, you know, it's daft mm. and fun and crazy and violent and formulaic. And it's nothing you haven't seen before, but it's Rambo. So you yeah. kind of have a... I ha, personally, I have a soft spot for it. I would, I'm probably going to give it a, probably a half a star more than I normally would okay. because it's Rambo. But even last night, I was watching The Predator, which came out last year. I was watching it on TV from Shane Black. Mm -hmm. And it very much goes back to the style of when Schwarzenegger was in Predator. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's what's good as well about Rambo Last Blood is it very much pays homage oh, to the original 80s style of it. Very, very much. And it's kind of a... Last blood, as in, you know, it's a play on words. This is his last blood. This is his family. This is his blood. This is the only bit of peace that he's ever had, and they took it from him. And you took it from the wrong guy. And, like, spoiler alert, nobody's going to, it's not, a, it's not a spoiler alert kind of movie. He literally removes the man's heart at the end and goes, <laughs> dun, 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 dun. and your man just dies. And Rambo's like, you know, and then he walks away. He's all bloodied and he's been shot himself. He's after killing all these guys in the most wonderful, gruesome, horrible ways. And then he sits in a rocking chair, <laughs> bleeding. And that's the end of the movie. It's fabulous. Like, it's nonsense and yet fabulous. And, I mean, Stallone has said himself that this is the last Rambo movie. And it should be. Yeah. Because it pays homage and it's, it's fun nonsense. Um, and it takes from so many... It's a Western. It's a classic revenge movie. Um, there's, you know, he gets the bow and arrow out and the mm, boom, all this yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Um, now, it's not a fabulous, fabulous film. Well, it, it's, it's one fun. of the first features for the director, Adrian Grumberg. Yeah, it's so, his first feature. He's done a few other bits. He's produced yeah. a few things, but he's, it's, it's well made. Yeah. It's, you know, there's nothing, nothing groundbreaking, but it's fun, entertaining movie. And, you know, if you like Rambo, you'll enjoy it. If you like action movies, you'll enjoy it. Well, here's a little fun fact for you. Tenerife. If you ever think of Negronis and Son, think of Rambo now as well, because that's where it was shot. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah They're in Bulgaria. Did I know they, that? They, yeah, they turned that into Mexico, and oh. you, could, you could actually half tell in the movie. I was like, no, oh, it doesn't look like Mexico to me, but it was, oh. it was, it was good. I, I enjoyed it okay, more so than I should. All right, out of five then, and you, you said you'd give it that extra half star. I'm going to give it an extra <laughs> half star. I think we're kind of getting a formula here, three and a half. I'm going to give it a three and a half. Okay. Because... It's, it's not going to blow your mind, but it's fun. And if you just want an hour of popcorn or a nice sandwich or something and just sit there watching Rambo doing his thing, kicking ass and taking names, it's fun. Okay. And hats off to Stallone at 72 or 3 to be able to do this. Uh, you know, he's running around tunnels and killing people and cracking heads and cracking necks. It's fun. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. Well, just for the record, Dave has given Rambo Last Blood and Downton Abbey the same score. Three <laughs> and a half out of five. Next up, we're looking at Ad Astra. Major, what can you tell us about the Lima Project? First manned expedition to the outer solar system, sir. Some 29 years ago. And the commander was? It was my father, sir. The ship disappeared approximately 16 years into the mission. Uh, no data was ever recovered. Deep space missions were halted after that. Well, Roy, we have something that might come as quite a shock to you. We believe your father is still alive near Neptune. My father's alive, sir? We believe so. There you go. That's a clip from Ad Astra, a story about astronaut Roy McBride from director James Gray, who a lot of people are talking about Brad Pitt getting Oscar nominations for this movie. James Gray has been up for four nominations for the Palme d'Or at Cannes, which I think is pretty impressive. Lisa and Dave both got to see it. Let's head over to Dave first. Dave, what did you make of Ad Astra? I thought it was enjoyable. It's a very realistic depiction of space travel. Um, it's in the near future, which I love that, the near future. And they, they kind of make space travel very mundane, as in there's a lovely moment where he's on a shuttle to the moon or a rocket to the moon, and he says to the lady, and they're flying commercial because he has to be under the radar on a mission, and he says, can I get a blanket and a, and a pillow? And she says, yeah, that's $125. And everybody kind of laughs and thinks of Ryanair. But, <laughs> it's, you know, they kind of mundaneify space travel. It's very realistic. The photography of space travel is brilliant. Basically, um, he's a... He's a 
the best of the best. He's kind of the maverick Top Gun of space travel in the future, and his heart rate is always, always steady. Space, dead steady. Mm-hmm. And they have, they have this little sticker that goes on his neck, are you ready for your psychological evaluation? And he automatically, they check his heart rate, and they ask him questions, and they measure the tone of his voice. It's all about psychological stuff. And um, he's the best of the best, because his father, played by Tommy Lee Jones, mm. was the best of the best of the best, and he's gone as far as Jupiter and Neptune. Missing. Neptune, thank you. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's basically... There's a strange energy... Well, they thought he was dead, isn't it? Yeah, they thought he was dead, but there's there's a strange energy purge, Mm. surge... Surge. Surge, pulse, thank you, Mm. coming from that region of space, which is causing major damage around the world, and they're kind of thinking, okay, he's gone a bit crazy, maybe, and he's sending these pulses to Earth from this star or whatever, Mm. and they send his son out as an emotional kind of thing to disarm him. him. And it's a little bit of... It's kind of a thriller-ish espionage kind of thing and there's factions and there's a lovely sequence where they're on the moon and they're on these uh, moon buggies and there's a bit of a chase and it's because everyone's on the moon at that stage yeah it's almost like you know uh, shopping centres on the moon and stuff but it's very very well made I mean it's very well great depiction of space Mm. and Mm. Brad Pitt I don't think he's ever had as good a performance in his life okay and I think he will certainly (laughs) his performance as in his performance uh, you know his performance is really good um, and there's a lot of emotional twists, but I'll let Lisa try me in there. Okay, right. Lisa, did Brad do it for you? Uh, Brad Pitt is excellent in this movie. And why, d- why, d- movie why did you look away when Dave well, said it's his cause, best cause performance? Legends of the Fall is his best performance. All right, I would have said Fight Club. No, no. Legends of the Fall. Okay, we're going to argue about this for an hour, but we we'll, don't have enough time. We'll fast Actually, forward, you know, yeah. I think in Glorious Bastards, he was class in that as well. Okay. Yeah, he's class in everything. Yeah. But no, I just felt that this was a, a psychological drama more than a sci-fi movie because it was like constantly with the psychological evaluation and he was doing his voiceover with the narration and you're like, oh yeah. my God, is this going to go on forever? And it was really like he was in therapy for the whole movie. Mm -hmm. That's what it was like. It was like, I'm doing this and it sounds like Apocalypse Now one minute and then it's 2001 A Space Odyssey and then it's over to Blade Runner. So 2001, to everybody. Would you consider that a good movie? Uh, No. (laughs) There's a little bit of hodgepodge of a lot of things in there. I'll agree with Lisa that it is a bit over intense, Mm -hmm. a little bit self-indulgent in terms of the the inner monologue Mm -hmm. of I'm looking at Gary. I wonder what he's thinking yes. in, internally. Like he's not actually saying <laughs> it. I, I'm um, wondering why is he looking at me? Yeah, <laughs> but, but in terms of a performance, the emotional performance of this driven, like his father was driven and left his, his son and his wife behind in, in, and went to space and didn't miss them. And there's a scene where he says, I didn't, I didn't care. miss you, I, didn't, I don't care. I don't didn't care think about, about you. Yeah, I didn't think about yeah. you. I don't care about you or your mother. My objective is space and, and extraterrestrials finding out what's, or whatever. what's out there. And, and Brad Pitt had the same... Emotional drive, drive mm. and he had problems with his relationships, flashbacks to Liv Tyler, etc. Mm-hmm. She's still suffering from Armageddon she and is. space <laughs> travel. But um, <laughs> she's just an ancillary character as a, you know, Brad Pitt's significant other in flashbacks. And then when they get to the climax of the movie, which, you know, um, you know, he realizes this and then he, his, his, there's certain elements of action and thriller in it, but it's very subliminal. What I got from it okay, as a movie yeah. was Solaris. It's Solaris yeah, yeah. Yeah. dialed up to 11 with the psychological space travel and yeah. the impact of psychological space. You know, space travel is inherently psychologically damaging, you know. So is it fair to say that if you love these sort of space yeah. travel, yes. time travel type movies yeah. like, you, you like Solaris space, 2001, you yeah. love if Ad Astra? You, yeah, Ad Astra is a really well-made film and it's in its genre of space travel and psychological stuff. And if you love Blade Runner, you'll love it. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's, it's, in, it's not an action movie. It's a thriller. It's a psychological thriller. Mm-hmm. It's a drama. And the, sp- the production design is Unreal. phenomenal. Unreal. O- okay, we're talking about Brad Pitt. What about our Irish Oscar-nominated actress in it? Underutilized in this movie. Yeah. Okay. She Absolutely. was underutilized. But like, she, had a, 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 she had a key... Her key, character, key moment. She had a key moment in the story, yeah. but um, she didn't get a lot of... She didn't get a lot of Not scenery airtime. to chew, you know what I mean? Mm. Okay. But she did well. I mean, obviously, herself and Brad Pitt have worked together in the past, and, you know, that's a great sign that they go, hey, this girl is good. She's, she's brilliant in it. Yeah. She's only in it for a short... Brief time. Ruth Negger we're talking about. Ruth yeah. Negger. Sure. Oh, she's, she's, yeah. she's excellent. Um, I mean, my favourite ancillary character in it was uh, the, you know, the captain who panics when they're landing. Yeah. Uh, Lauren Dean is his name. He played the, the brother in Gattaca. Yeah. You'd know his face. You'd go, I know that you guy. Know, yeah. know yeah. No, no, that guy. And he always plays this 
the guy who is messes it up messes it up and shows that his brother or whoever was is better. always better and um he he he's brilliant in this as well the lauren dean you've, you'll see him and go i know yeah. his face and you'll go i don't know his name but he was brilliant in it but ruth nigg is very good and tommy lee jones is excellent. Donald, Donald Sutherland. Sutherland. Yeah. Donald Sutherland yeah. yes. steals a couple of scenes as well. Classic yeah, yeah, Donald Sutherland. Uh, but he Brad still has that presence, moment. Brad Pitt's performance, in my opinion, is a tour de force in terms of internalising. Now, the voiceover inner, inner monologue stuff is a bit 70s movies, mm. yeah. hence the Solaris stuff. Mm. But he is excellent. And there's moments where there's tears coming out of his eyes and it's like, it's Oh, he visceral, can cry. That boy can cry. Visceral, mm. real, amazing. Yeah. And honestly, if he doesn't get an Oscar nomination for this, I'll be shocked. I'll be shocked. Okay. And, and whether he'll win or not, I don't know, but he, he, he certainly should be nominated. He's the one this. to beat right now. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Excellent. between this and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, he's on fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Excellent. And was he better than DiCaprio than Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? Ooh. No. They okay. were equally as good. I think they were equally as good. Yeah. I think they, okay. they bounced. Uh, if they don't They're probably no definitely going to go up against if each if other if then if in the Oscars. Mm. I think so. But if they don't make another five movies together... Their agents need to be fired. Yeah, yeah. The chemistry between them is fabulous. Okay, fabulous. Yeah. All right, out of five, Dave? I'm going to give it a solid four because it's really well made. It's a genre. It's a niche genre thing. The performances are amazing. It's a little bit self-indulgent. It takes itself a little bit too seriously. Um, and it's a little formulaic, but it's, it's, it's a fun ride. The, the visuals are amazing. <coughs> There's like 2001 Space Odyssey is a cracking movie. And anything that emulates that is brilliant. And Brad Pitt is excellent in it. Mm -hmm. And Lisa? I'm going to give it a solid three. Okay. Which is not a great review, but still, if you're into sci-fi, you will love this movie, I think. Okay. If you're into the slow pacing of Blade Runner, and if you like, like, yeah, I love yeah. Apocalypse now, but I, I, that I, like, I don't really like space. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I mean, I, with I a lot of the space. space movies now with like uh, Gravity and uh, First Snooze Man. Snooze Fest, by the way, sorry. Uh, but this, is, this is actually a better depiction of space travel, if you can even believe that, because those mm -hmm. two were amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah this yeah, is right, even yeah. better. This is like okay. the future, what this, we actually will see. This is actually see. the best okay. depiction of space travel I've ever seen. That's yeah. Right. Amazing. Yeah. Trump will love this movie. Never mind. Space Force. Space Force. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> Anyways, there you go. That is the review for Ad Astra out in cinemas now. Do go and check it out. Right now, short message from our amazing partners slash sponsors. We're coming to you from iCinema Go each and every week for a series four of Just Like in the... I was about to say, Just Like in the Cinema. Just Like in the <laughs> Movies. <laughs> just Like in the iCinema. But yeah. <sighs> if you want to see or hear what it's like, Just Like in the iCinema... We're right back after this. Thanks to iCinema Galway for supporting us with Series 4 of Just Like in the Movies. And something I'm really excited about coming up in the iCinema on October the 8th is Metallica and the San Francisco Symphony S&M 2. Cool. You might remember the one with the music composer... Michael Kamen. Michael Kamen. Yeah. Thank you, Dave. Um, this should be really exciting. It's got some of their new music featured on it. I saw them at Slane a few weeks ago. They were cool. But uh, it's definitely an experience hearing heavy metal... Mm -hmm. With, with the symphony orchestra. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's something really with special. Like, the sound systems in here in the ice cinema are awesome. So proper sound. Like if you did this at home on Netflix or whatever, it's not going to have the same not effect. No, the same no. sound here is blow your mind. Yeah. Mm. And just say as well, tickets for Joker, which we hope to review in a few weeks' yes. time, are on sale now as well. A lot of excitement about that new movie mm. starring Joaquin Phoenix. But uh, I was delighted to hear this. Irish actor Chris O'Dowd has won his first Creative Arts Emmy Award for his performance in short form comedy series, which I think is interesting because it could be the way things are going. It's called State of the Union, but it's 10 episodes, 10 minutes long each. Wow. And he stars alongside Roseman Pike. Oh, so yeah. he got an Emmy there. So good man, Chris. Well, she's I haven't seen that. Roseman Pike is a great actress too. But yeah. I mean, that, that's a great new form of yeah. entertainment that we're. I'm not familiar with it, so I'm looking forward to having a look at that. Yeah. Also, well, you're not familiar that her name is Rosamond, but okay, go on. 
Um, <laughs> Rosamond, that's what I said. Rosamond. You both said Rosamond. Rosamond. Well, if you say it really fast, you're not supposed Rosamond, to notice. Rosamond, that's Rosamond. one of the tricks I learned in radio, by any especially other when it came to tennis LSD. players' names. True. Uh, Shawshank Redemption celebrating 25 years yeah. this year. Wow. Old. Yeah. 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 Considered the best movie of all time. Well, yeah. I mean, it's amazing that it didn't do very well in the box office. It's only yeah. after its release that it got the legs that it the got. Video. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, absolute classic. I'd say it's comfortably, solidly in my top 20 of all time. It's in my top one. So you consider it the best movie of Absolutely. all time? Absolutely. Dave, you're... It's in my top 20. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to say where, <laughs> but it's certainly there, and it's, I don't think it'll ever move out of my top 20. All right, There's so a few yeah. other nonsense films in there, but that's one of the... Yeah, it's, uh, let's say top 15. Okay, I'm going to throw <laughs> a, a toughie at you now. Mm. What do you consider the best Irish movie ever made? In the Name of the Father. Okay. Mm. The I Guard. Was amazing. The oh Guard. God. The Guard. That's for me. good. Because yeah, it yeah. just, it's just, it's Irish. It's, it's so Irish. And uh, the messing and the Irish sense of humor that the Guard has, that he's always blah the the Secret Service agent, even with the whole, I'm an Olympic swimmer. And you're like, is he joking? Is mm. he not joking? If for me, it's just the Irish distillation of the Irish sense humor. I no. love it. I love no. the guard. No. Love In the, the name of the father, if we're going by Irish director, but this is the thing. What Ireland is an Irish movie? Is it the money? Ireland, is it Ireland, the field. Okay. Ooh, yeah. I'd, yeah, I'll give you the yeah. field. I'd, I'd the quiet man. That streets ahead. The quiet of the man. The qui- okay, sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah. No. The quiet man for me because yeah. it's set in Ireland. It's it's set in Galway. Yeah. Mm. It's an Irish film. It's yeah. It's a quiet man for me. <laughs> sold. No. End the story. Barry no. Fitzgerald. No. Sold. Sold. I'm okay. the field. Sorry. Look, <laughs> if anyone has any comments on what they think is the best Irish film of all time, uh, do get in touch with us. You can drop us a tweet, uh, or you can comment on our Facebook channel, Instagram, uh, whatever works best for you. Don't forget to subscribe to us on Apple i. I should say iTunes, Apple Podcasts. Mm-hmm. Um, people will still know them as iTunes, but they like to be called Apple Podcasts. You can follow us on Spotify, hear us on SoundCloud, Stitcher, Podomatic, the whole work. So you can watch the show in full on GK Media's YouTube channel. My thanks, as always, to Dave Cohen. Pleasure. And to Lisa Tracy. You're welcome. And we look <laughs> forward to reviewing more movies for you on episode three next week. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, go and check out some movies at iCinema Galway. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.